It's 9 o'clock on a Saturday night, and we're riding along with Miami Beach Code Compliance on the lookout for illegal short-term rentals. And what are you looking for tonight? Hopefully we can establish contact if it's occupied and determine whether it's a violation or not. Code Compliance Officer Vijma Maharaj has seen it all. Large, noisy late-night parties in residential neighborhoods. Commercial video shoots with scantily clad women in a home investigated for short-term rental complaints. I want to pity Miami Beach code compliance. And unwitting tourists who say they unknowingly booked Airbnbs in prohibited areas. Be able to do this. This is messed up. All captured on body camera videos recorded over the past two years. Hello. Some are so blatant, as these house rules show, what to do if someone asks. They're told to lie by saying they're a friend and certainly don't mention they rent this place. You're not allowed to rent this house for less than six months and one day. Everybody has to leave. This party needs to clear up. Miami Beach, one of the country's most popular resort destinations, is also a popular city for short-term rentals. It's also one of the most aggressive in the country for going after illegal rentals with stiff fines. Only certain sections of the city, like South Beach, permit rentals less than six months and one day. Large portions of the residential sections of the city are not permitted. And you would say, when you hear that story... To Miami Beach Mayor Dan Gelber, the issue is clear-cut. Well, they may work in some places, but they don't really work here, because at the end of the day, it's not the mom and pops that we're seeing here. We're seeing commercialized, uh, predatory... Uh, companies that are trying to commercialize our residential communities. Predatory seems like a really strong word. What do you mean by that? It is predatory because it's not about a mom and pop or a, a grandmother wanting to bring in a college kid to make him chicken soup at night. It's people taking very uh, nice properties, buying them, and turning them into essentially a flop house. Gelber, a former prosecutor and Florida state lawmaker, says Airbnb and other home sharing platforms must abide by the law. Have you spoken to Airbnb or any of the other companies that operate here? I've spoken to some of the representatives before I, I was elected. I'd like to send them a message. I'd like them to be corporately uh, responsible. I'd like them to do the right thing. Why do you think they haven't done that? Look, these are not charities. These uh, home sharing platforms, they want to make money. From South Florida to Southern California, short term rentals have turned some neighborhoods into next door nightmares. Different cities encounter different problems. Across the country, in Los Angeles, we found large homes routinely advertised on Airbnb for mega parties, prompting noise complaints and a proposed ordinance to restrict short-term rental use. At a loud party in Millbrae, California, in the San Francisco Bay Area, shots rang out. Guests seen on surveillance cameras running down the street. Airbnb says it has zero tolerance for this type of behavior and permanently banned the guest. Airbnb says these incidents don't represent the overwhelming number of satisfied hosts and guests in 81,000 cities and 191 countries, and it has successfully worked with lawmakers around the world. Back on the streets of Miami Beach, it's not long before we roll up on a group of vacationers. The building has telltale signs of an illegal rental. Two of the units advertised on Airbnb have lock boxes and keypads. Do you live there? We do. How long have you been living there? We actually just rented the Airbnb. The guests say they booked the Airbnb for two nights through a host named Rachel. It's the same Rachel in this listing we found online. Are you guys surprised to hear that it's not legal here? Yeah, actually, yeah, because I mean, it's something that's, you know, it's just not the right people. It gets even more interesting when Officer Maharaj calls Rachel. I was just speaking with occupants here and they told me that they rented your unit. The city has an ordinance which prohibits short-term rental. Are you aware of this? Oh, they're actually my, my guests or my friends. Oh, so they, they're just, they told yeah, me they're that, staying in my apartment. So are they staying here for free? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. I can get them on the phone to talk to you right now because they just told me they paid approximately $950 for the weekend and it was rented via Airbnb. Oh, no, no, no. That shouldn't... No. Um, let me double... Let me check with them again. Hello, sir. I think you guys had a free apartment. Rachel told me you guys are friends and you didn't have to pay to stay there. Is that true? 
That is not true. Okay, well, she's on the phone. Maybe she wants to give you a refund? Rachel says she's associated with a company called Vicao, which is well known to city officials. Vicao is a New York-based management company that rents properties and then leases them via Airbnb and other rental platforms to short-term tenants. Both Vicao and the property owner who is staying in a downstairs unit were each issued a violation notice which carries a $20,000 fine. The owner didn't want to talk to us. The city's fines range from $20,000 to $100,000 for the fifth offense. The total fines for Vicao and its co-founders amount to $700,000 at four properties in Miami Beach. The city is on track to conduct more than 1,000 investigations into short-term rentals this year, up from more than 800 in 2017. Total fines so far this year, $2.4 million, but only about 183,000 has been collected. Right around here. At another illegal Airbnb advertised by the same host, identified by the city as Rachel Perea, Officer Maharaj walks in to find out what's going on. This building is located in a zone where it's prohibited to rent out an apartment for less than six months and one day. Oh, so wow. We... The college students tell us their group of six rented the apartment for $1,279 for five days. The apartment is clearly set up for short-term guests. So this is the other bedroom. This is a two-bedroom apartment. It supposedly sleeps eight. This unit and a second one in the building now have together racked up four violations. Both were leased by Vicao. The unit's owner says he didn't know anything about them being used for this purpose. After we contacted Airbnb, the company said it's given the students a full refund. These properties on Airbnb. When we wanted to get some answers from the Airbnb host, Rachel Perea. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, well, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry. Um, I, I can't take this call right now. Vicao's COO and co-founder Isabel Bernie says her company has since gotten out of the leases where these short-term rentals aren't allowed and has not paid the $700,000 in fines. Our lawyers are, are resolving that. They feel like it's unconstitutional the way they're finding. There's many, many different groups fighting the city and it hasn't been resolved. They're not collecting the fines that they're, that they're issuing. Are you just going to wait and run out the clock and see if laws change in Miami Beach? Right now, we're just not accepting any home homeowners in Miami Beach. We get about 30 to 50 requests a day to lease property on our website. Do your investors know that you have these outstanding fines in Miami Beach? Our investors are fully aware of everything going on, and they know that we, you know, stuck our neck out for a lot of owners and that we are um, tackling a really difficult problem in general with our, with our property and with um, basically accepting single-family homes. Are you saying that you will continue to break the law on some of these properties until I'm not saying that we change? want to fight and that we're going to enter properties now knowing that the law has changed and we're not allowed. She confirmed that Rachel Perea is still one of Vicao's hosts. She said the renters were friends, that they weren't paying anything, which was false. So she lied to code compliance. Are you aware of that? No, but how do you know it was it was false? Because I do let friends and family use our places. These are the violations. This is the customer receipt. Right, you know. Yeah, I mean, she probably was just put on the spot, and she was probably scared, and I didn't, I wasn't aware. Responding to our investigation, Airbnb says it has removed listings associated with Vicao from the site. In an interview at Airbnb's San Francisco headquarters, Chris Lahane, the head of global policy, strongly defended the company's track record. I've yet to see a program being run by any mayor, any elected official, that in this time of economic inequality is generating $6,100 for a typical middle class family, all without the expenditure of a single taxpayer dollar. That is what Airbnb is about at its core trying to use technology to create economic empowerment. Should Airbnb be responsible for what is, in that market, illegal activity on the platform? I think what seems to me that would be a common sense solution for Miami Beach, happy to do this, if they actually really want to sit down and have a constructive conversation, is you could take that 35% of the city that's a residential area, make that an exclusionary zone, allow the activity to be able to take place in the 65% of the city that's actually explicitly zoned for this type of activity. In the meantime, 
You have illegal listings on your site. Well, first of all, I think if you actually look at the underlying law in the city, in Miami Beach, right? The Miami Beach allows for this activity to take place. $20,000 fines on someone making their home available a few times a year to actually help make ends meet. Does the city actually want to make this work as well as possible for as many people as possible? He says Airbnb has more than 400 partnerships with places around the world, including the proposed restrictions in Los Angeles. If you had to grade Airbnb, what grade would you give the company in terms of complying with regulations broadly? I appreciate the, the professor asking the question. Uh, what I would say is that um, with those cities who actually want to engage in the conversation, uh, we deserve a really high grade. But what about the cities who don't? That's like asking me to how am I going to do on a test when, when, the, when the person grading the test is actually going to even uh, give the correct answers and incorrect uh, result. Right? If you have a teacher who's trying to rig the process, it's impossible to be able to answer the question uh, about how you can do it. In markets like Miami Beach, where you do have illegal listings on Airbnb, why not block those? We've worked with cities all over the country. We put in something called a pass-through registration system. Cities can determine whether something is in the permissible area or not. Lahane takes aim at the hotel industry. Airbnb's competition, which he says has been shown to be closely aligned with regulators. Miami Beach hasn't been interested in doing that um, because Miami Beach up to this point in time has just not had a serious desire to really want to engage on this because at the end of the day, as the information that has come out reveals, they're effectively working hand in glove with the hotel industry, which is incredibly powerful, uh, and a hotel industry that really doesn't want to see everyday people to be able to use their homes to make extra money. The American Hotel and Lodging Association tells us that instead of supporting common sense regulations, Airbnb has opted to deploy a massive obstruction campaign of dirty tactics, deceptive messaging, and personal attacks against anyone who raises a concern. I'm kind of rebuilding effort here. McGill University assistant professor David Walksmith, who has researched Airbnb regulations around the world, says Miami Beach is not atypical. Miami Beach has been a little more aggressive um, than some other cities, but I would think of it really that it's the kind of the, the front of a big wave. Um, you know, you can't throw a rock in this country right now without hitting a city that's moving to regulate short term rentals more aggressively. And so Miami Beach is kind of at the forefront of that. But they're very much in line with the trend that's happening across the country and actually across the world. Among Walksmith's research, primarily done through the university, is this 2018 report commissioned by the hotel industry that found 45% of all Airbnb reservations in New York City last year were illegal. Airbnb calls the report deeply flawed and inaccurate. Bottom line, this is a company that's not going away. How does it play nice with others? Well, I think that right now what Airbnb needs to do as a company is to come up with you know, a strategy for, for being just a little more proactive with the way that they're willing to enforce regulations, right? Lots of cities are passing laws, but they have a hard time enforcing those laws. I think that Airbnb's current business model is not compatible with, um, with the kind of the recognition that short-term rentals are not in broadly in the public interest in cities. Clearly, even with an aggressive enforcement team in Miami Beach, the illegal rentals remain hard to enforce. Just look at what we found when we returned to the same apartment that had been cited two weeks prior. A group of college students on spring break who told us they had no idea they were staying in an illegal Airbnb. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.